In this video, we're going to spend some time talking about an important topic for administrators, which is forward propagation. So the format of this video is an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions. So I'm going to ask a question, I'm going to answer that question, and then we're going to do a demonstration uh, in order to let you see the concept in action. So uh, hopefully you learn a lot going through this. I know I learned some things actually going through the recording of the video, and uh, hopefully this will be useful to you as you try to uh, uh, implement forward propagation in your organization. Okay, so what is forward propagation? Forward propagation is when a change is made to a field in an effective dated record that is not top of stack. With forward propagation, success factors automatically updates or propagates the field to records higher in the stack. This forward propagation is available on almost all effective dated portlets uh, within Employee Central. So uh, the operative term there is effective dated. So things like biographical information and employment details that are not effective dated don't have a forward propagation uh, because it doesn't have effective dates. So rather than trying to describe it, I'm going to now show you a, a brief demo of forward propagation in practice. Okay, so in our demonstration, we have gotten word that the uh, number of weekly hours for Keith Richards needs to be updated as of October 1st from 40 to 35. Now, though, if we go in and we look at Keith's uh, record, what we're going to see is there is already a record effective on October 26th, which is after October 1st, obviously, uh, where um, the work schedule was changed. So, uh, But now what we want to see is, uh, can we change the record effective on October 1st and then have those hours um, because he's still going to be working 35 hours on October 26th. Uh, are we going to need to update, make this update twice, or can we just update it on the one record as of October 1st? So that's what we're going to see. So we're going to go in here and we're going to update, uh, the, uh, standard weekly hours from 40 to 35. And we are going to save this record. And what we're hoping is, is that this change that we are making on October 1st, since there's no other change that has taken place to that same field, um, is going to get updated automatically on the top of stack record. And so you can see here uh, where the uh, standard weekly hours were changed on October 1st, no big surprise there. But what we want to have happen is that change to also be reflected in the top of stack as of October 20, uh, 26th, and it is. So as you can see here, that is uh, forward propagation in a nutshell. Uh, the change that you are making, uh, getting surfaced up to the top of stack record. Okay, so that is a nice simple example of forward propagation in practice. Now, though, let's flip the uh, script a little bit and let's talk about when forward propagation does not happen. So the first example would be when the same field uh, is changed in a record higher in the stack. Um, in that case, the change from the field does not propagate to the higher uh, effective dated record. So let's now do a quick demo of this scenario. Okay, in this example, we are going to change Keith's uh, work schedule and we're going to change it um, on October 2nd um, to a rotational schedule. Uh, so when we do this, of course, uh, uh, as we've already mentioned, there is a record where the work schedule changes as of October 26th. So what we're going to show now is what happens when we do this. Uh, on uh, October 2nd. So we're going to make the change uh, to the rotational schedule. And when we uh, save this, uh, what we want to see is, does this forward propagate um, to the top of stack record? And in this case, uh, what we're going to see is when we look at the record, uh, the top of stack is not going to have uh, that change propagated because we already have that same field getting updated um, in that top of stack record already. So uh, success factor says, hey, we're not going to let this one uh, uh, bleed through to the top because there is already something in the top where we have gone to the trouble of changing that, the, changing that field. 
So and that's an example of when forward propagation does not happen due to a conflict that exists on the existing top of stack. Now let's do another scenario where uh, forward propagation does not happen. And that is if you uh, update an, an historical record online um, and you just edit it rather than inserting a record. So let's show an example of that now. Okay, so in this example, um, I realized that I needed to correct uh, the record that I already have uh, for data change uh, for the standard weekly hours where I switched the standard weekly hours to 40. I wanted to also update the local job title at the same time. So I'm gonna go down to the local job title and I'm going to uh, update that uh, to uh, a test value. And uh, so what we're going to see here is when I save this, uh, unlike other times when the forward propagation automatically happened and that value uh, gets uh, moved up to the top of stack record. In this case, notice that the local job title did not update on the top of stack because it was edited. So we've done uh, a few examples now uh, with forward propagation uh, going through the uh, front end, going through the UI. But what about forward propagation with file imports? And this is the question I get asked most often from administrators uh, because they need to load in a, a bunch of data. So the, the good news is that uh, it works, uh, forward propagation works pretty well with file imports. There is one thing to know, and that is for job and compensation information, uh, there is a permission setting that you must set in order to enable forward propagation to happen. And you can see this here. This is under Manage Permission Roles. There is uh, under Employee Central Import Settings. You need to check this checkbox and, and enable forward propagation during incremental import. And of course, this is uh, needs to be set for whatever the user is that is going to be doing the imports. Uh, the good news is, though, for almost all of their portlets, uh, forward propagation happens automatically. Um, and this is if you're using something called centralized services, uh, which we will talk about in a bit. So now let's do a demonstration of an, a file import uh, onto job information with forward propagation enabled. Okay, in this demo, we are going to load in Axeman as the local job title for Keith Richards, and this is going to be effective on October 3rd. So what we want to see now is what happens when we import this value. Is it going to propagate to the top of stack record? Um, so you can see here I have put in, uh, I've loaded that file, and now let's go look at Keith's record and see what it looks like. I go to... Um, uh, the uh, file and you can see that the change was made effective on October 3rd and you will see also that it did it also was kept on the top of stack record so forward propagation did work in this scenario now let's talk about forward propagation and how it works with portlets uh, with multiple records such as uh, on compensation. So you may have multiple pay components and uh, how does the uh, forward propagation work in those scenarios? Well, uh, if the record type is new, um, the, the record will be loaded. So, and by that, what I mean is, let's say that we have uh, two pay components uh, in our load file and one of the two uh, pay components already exists with a higher uh, effective dated record, um, then that one is not going to get uh, forward propagated because you know the theory is that uh, you have a um, a record uh, inside of uh, success factors where the intention was that uh, we want to change that. Uh, uh, value and we want to change it on an effect uh, on a higher effective date so therefore that is going to trump what you are loading in um, uh, but if you have a second uh, type of pay component in the same file that does not exist yet in your uh, compensation section then that second record would then load so now um, what we want to do is do a demonstration of this, uh, uh, this concept in practice. So we, we're going to import an update with, uh, with two pay components, one being updated and one that uh, does not yet exist. 
Okay, so in this example, uh, uh, Keith Richards has had his uh, merit increase already loaded for the year, uh, but we get word that he and along with some other people need to have a, a retroactive pay change as of the uh, middle of August. So we need to put that into the system as well. So let's see what happens in this scenario. So uh, as you can see here, his exist he was given a raise on October 1st, but I also uh, uh, up to 5,500. But you can see here that uh, we've got these two files and the second one is the one that's most important. You can see here that we have uh, his pay is getting set to 5,600 and then he's going to also get a variable pay component of 12 uh, of 12%. And so now what we want to see is uh, what does this look like when he gets this uh, uh, pay increase, this file load. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we, we have to load both components, the comp info um, and then the recurring pay. So we're going to import employee data and we're doing both of those. Okay, so we have these amounts loaded. Now let's go look and see what this looks like when we um, look at Keith's record. You will see here that on August 15th, the our effective date, the bonus target uh, gets updated as well as the base salary over and above what the October 1st, 2021 record is. But you'll notice that the forward propagation did not happen to the base salary because there was a, an amount that was uh, uh, for that field as of October 1st. So that for that's one scenario where forward propagation did not happen. Does forward propagation happen with metadata framework objects such as position, uh, division department, job classification? Uh, the good news is yes. Um, uh, the forward propagation concepts are pretty much the same in, in work the way that we've already talked about with employee data. So let's actually do a, a quick demo of this and show forward propagation happening in job classification. Okay, so we're going to update the job classification. Um, you'll notice that there is already a top of stack record for this uh, that has an employment type uh, associated with it. Now we're going to make a new record effective on October 1st. And on this record, we're going to update two fields. We're going to update employment type and we are going to update the pay grade. And hopefully by now what you will uh, know is going to happen is that the pay grade field um, is going to uh, bleed through to the top of stack record, but the employment type uh, is not going to bleed through because there's already a field there. Notice that you actually get a nice little um, a pop-up message there that says that uh, the change is going to be forward property. And now let's see what the results. So you can see here on the top of stack record, we have the employment type is what was already on the top of stack record and the pay grade does actually get updated to reflect the value that was put on the prior record. Okay, so earlier I talked about centralized services. Now it's time to explain these in more detail. So what are centralized services? Centralized services um, is the new processing paradigm that is used within Employee Central uh, to handle the saving of data. Uh, they are arranged by portlet. Um, so there are centralized services for, say, compensation information, job information, employment details, you name it. There is a centralized service that uh, has been created for each of these. Um, and they handle the saving both on the front end as well as during the importing process. Why, so why do we care about um, these centralized services? Well, centralized services pretty much use forward propagation by default. So this makes the process pretty much standard um, across the board for any effective dated uh, employee portlet. Uh, centralized services is going to make sure that forward propagation is in place. So... Um, you know, but we needed to mention this because as of the recording of this video, many of the portlet centralized services are currently set to opt in. Um, but eventually uh, the vision is that all of the centralized services are going to be um, enabled uh, automatically by default. So it's not going to be opt-in. Everyone's going to be using them. So for purposes of this video, we are thinking ahead and thinking of a, uh, of the future when uh, we all have centralized services in, uh, enabled. Um, so of course, uh, you know, our, and our recommendation would be to you know plan for that future and set your system up right now with centralized services. Go through whatever regression testing you need to do in order to do that. 
Lastly, I want to just mention briefly a special topic, which is employee slash position shared fields. So I didn't really get into this topic during this video because I wanted to, it to really focus in on um, uh, the uh, propagation topic. But it is really important because there is uh, a lot of overlap between that topic and um, the topic of position and job information fields. Um, and the fact that there are all, always a lot of uh, common fields between the two. So job classification, pay grade, uh, employee, cla employee class, cost center, et cetera. And uh, the important thing to know is that you really need to pay special attention to make sure that, the syn that there is synchronization going on um, between uh, the uh, position and em employee if I update on the position side. And let's say I update uh, 100 positions with new cost centers. I want to make sure that those changes uh, reflect on the job information side. And then vice versa, I want to make sure that if I'm up to upload uh, to job information, that those same types of changes would flow back automatically to the position side. Um, that is a different topic, um, and there's more to discuss on that topic. Um, and we were going to cover that in a, in a separate video. So stay tuned for that. So. Uh, yeah, hopefully uh, you got some uh, benefit out of this and you can understand uh, forward propagation a little bit better uh, in your implementation. So thanks for your time.